the satisfaction of a job well done, the pride in knowing you did it yourself, the beauty of a landscape transformed. With Pavestone products, you can transform an ordinary yard into a beautiful landscape uniquely designed by you. Build an attractive patio, add a decorative retaining wall, or create a winding garden path that will add value to your home. Step by step, one project at a time, your landscape inspirations become reality with Pavestone's do-it-yourself home beautification systems. Pavestone landscape and garden edging can enhance the appearance of any lawn and garden. Use it to section off a vegetable garden or add decorative borders around flower beds. For your lawn, use edging to add distinctive landscaping designs while at the same time providing a barrier to stop encroaching weeds. Concrete edgers are colorful and permanent and will never rust or rot. Pavestone edgers come in a number of styles and colors for endless design possibilities. Whichever you choose, you'll find that installing edging is both simple and easy. There are two methods of installing Pavestone edgers, basic installation and estate edge installation. But before we begin, we're going to need a few things. Gloves and safety glasses, a chisel and small sledgehammer, spray paint, a shovel and spade, nylon mason string, a hand tamp, a tape measure, wooden or metal stakes, a pick if the ground is hard, paved stone paver sand, a wheelbarrow, a string level, and a torpedo level. For basic installation, simply use a water hose or a string line to determine the placement of the edgers according to your landscape design. Mark the installation area with spray paint. Then dig a trench two to three inches deep and cover the bottom with a one inch bed of sand. Now place the edging stones end to end into the trench and gently tap them evenly into place with a blunt object like a wooden mallet or the handle butt of a hammer. Once all the stones are in place, fill in the empty areas around the edgers with soil for stabilization. That's all there is to it. Pavestone Estate Edge adds a more distinctive, sophisticated look to your lawn or garden. Estate Edge stones can be stacked three courses or layers high above the ground, with one course set as a base to form borders up to 12 inches high around raised flower beds, mark off landscape boundaries, or build a decorative ring around a lamppost or tree. As with the basic installation, use a water hose or a string line placed in the shape of your project to determine the placement of the stones. Mark the installation area with spray paint and then dig a trench three to four inches deep by six inches wide. Shovel one to two inches of sand, starting at the lowest level if the trench is dug out on sloped ground. Next, place stakes at each end of the trench and tie a string line, setting the level of the string to the height you want the edgers to sit above the ground. Now, starting at the lowest point in the trench, place the first estate edge stone in the sand, making sure it's level front to back and side to side. Continue setting edgers along the trench in the same manner, carefully placing them so that all the stones are set level and of equal distance to the guiding string line. Your design may require that you cut edgers into custom lengths. To do so, use a mini sledgehammer and chisel to score the edger on all sides, and then pound the chisel into the score line until it breaks. Perform this step on a concrete walk or drive for best results. Once your base foundation of edgers is set and level, simply begin stacking the next course of edgers in a stagger stack over the joints formed by the stones in the lower row. Continue the process until your unique design is complete. Tip: You should use concrete adhesive 
to lock the top stone to the row below for stability. That's all there is to creating a functional yet defined edger system. Simple, straightforward, and beautiful. Congratulations! You just completed a valuable landscape improvement to your home. Now you can step back and enjoy your accomplishment with the personal satisfaction of having created a beautiful outdoor environment that is uniquely yours, easy to maintain, and one that you, your family and friends will enjoy for years to come. The satisfaction of a job well done. The pride in knowing you did it yourself. The beauty of a landscape transformed. With Pavestone products, you can transform an ordinary yard into a beautiful landscape uniquely designed by you. Build an attractive patio. Add a decorative retaining wall. Or create a winding garden path that will add value to your home step by step, one project at a time. Your landscape inspirations become reality with Pavestone's do-it-yourself home beautification systems. Pavestone paving stones come in a number of shapes and colors for a variety of design possibilities. They are stronger and more durable than either poured concrete or asphalt and are the ideal surface for a patio, walkway, driveway, or swimming pool deck. Today, we will demonstrate how to create a home patio. But before we begin, we're going to need a few things. Gloves and safety glasses, a wheelbarrow, one straight eight foot long yellow pine two by four, a sledgehammer or a heavy rubber or plastic mallet, a shovel and a spade, two eight-foot lengths of one or three-quarter inch steel electrical conduit pipe, a nylon mason string, two long tape measures, a broom, a carpenter's chalk line, a rake, a line level that you can clip to a string, a pick if your ground is hard, a grease pencil, aluminum or plastic edging, eight-inch landscape nails, a gas-powered plate compactor, a rototiller, a guillotine stone cutter or masonry saw, and wooden or metal stakes. A cubic yard of very coarse concrete sand for every 200 square feet of project area, or three half cubic foot bags for every 10 feet. If you're installing a surface that'll be driven over, such as a driveway, or you have poor soil conditions, you will need one cubic yard of crushed limestone or paved stone paver base for every 80 square feet of project area. If you're installing a patio, pedestrian walkway, or any surface that won't be driven over, you will need one 94 pound bag of Portland cement for each 30 square feet of the project area. There are basically eight steps to install paving stones. One, site preparation. Two, excavating. 3. Installing the base 4. Screeding the sand bed 5. Laying the paving stones 6. Cutting the paving stones 7. Installing the edge restraints and 8. Compacting and finishing This project is a freestanding circular patio. To begin building this project, you'll want to take a can of spray paint and draw to the best of your ability the perimeter of the project on the ground. We want to lay out the patio design and determine the finished height. Determine in what direction you want the pavers to lay in the finished project and run a string line across the middle of the project in that direction. Then place another string line at a 90 degree angle, again passing through the larger part of the project, forming a cross. From the intersection of the two string lines, make a mark three feet out from the intersection on the width line. On the length line, make a mark four feet from the intersection. Now, measure the distance, 
diagonally from the three and four foot marks. For the angle at the corner to be 90 degrees, the diagonal must be exactly five feet long. If not, adjust the angle of the width line until the diagonal is five feet. If your project is a rectangular patio, begin by spray painting a rectangle on the ground to approximate the project's finished dimensions. Place stakes in each of the four corners. For accurate stone laying, it's very important that the sides of the rectangle are parallel and that each corner is a 90 degree right angle. You can make accurate 90 degree angles using the 3-4-5 triangle method as we just described. However, you want to measure the angle from a corner of the project, staking the string line out in two directions. For more detail on rectangular patios, see the installation information on the Pavestone CD. Now, let's get back to our circular patio. With the project area staked and marked, the next step is to establish the height of the paving stones. The height should be slightly above the surrounding ground and sloped so rainwater will drain away from the house. To establish an adequate slope, use the line level. Start at a stake and begin by tying a string at the level you want the paving stone height to be. Set the level of the string by using the line level on the string line. Adjust the string on the outer stake until it is level. Now to establish a slope, simply calculate a fall of one inch for every eight feet. A patio that runs 16 feet out from the side of the house will have a slope of two inches. So just lower the string level on the outer stake two inches. Repeat with the other string line going away from the house. With the project area marked out, you are now ready to excavate. Dig out the project area to the proper depth plus another six inches past the string lines. For a patio, dig out a depth of three and a half inches down from the height of the string lines. If the surface you are excavating is grass, use a spade or a sod cutter to remove the sod, but don't throw it away because you'll want to use it to re-sod the edge around the paving stones when the job is complete. So just roll it up and store it in a cool, damp place to keep it moist. Use a shovel to remove the rest of the soil once the sod is removed. You may have to use a pick to loosen the dirt if the ground is hard. Check your depth regularly using a measuring tape against the string lines and additional cross lines. You want to dig out a rough depth that comes to within an inch of the final depth. For areas with poor or wet soil conditions, heavy clay or extremely cold climates, remove the native soil to a depth of seven inches. Now you're ready to install the paved stone paver base. Be sure to take your time to get it right. A well-prepared base is the secret to a beautiful and long-lasting patio. Please do not skip this step and lay pavers over native soil. Generally, four inches of a well-compacted paver base should be all you need. However, keep in mind that soils vary from region to region. Consult with your local Home Depot to determine the best type of base material for where you live. We will use the cement stabilization method today, which involves tilling Portland cement into the existing soil. After the soil and Portland cement are tilled together, use a vibrating plate compactor to tamp down the base. If the project area is small, you could use a hand tamp. However, we strongly recommend renting a plate compactor because you will also want to pack down the paving stones once they have been placed. When the base is compacted, lightly wet it so that it becomes rigid. Make sure that the compacting is complete. The final step in preparing the base is to make absolutely sure that it is flat and that the slope is consistent. Your finished paving stone surface will conform to the base exactly, exposing every dip and rise, so it's important to get it level. Before you can set the paving stones, you must cover the base with an even layer of paver sand. 
Take two one-inch or three-quarter inch steel conduit pipes and set them on the base about six feet apart, making sure that they are parallel to each other. Shovel some coarse paper sand between the pipes. Level out the sand by screeding it back and forth with an eight-foot two-by-four until it is smooth and flat. Lift out the pipes and carefully fill in and screed the gaps. You will work the project area one square section at a time, first screeding the sand bed and then laying the stones on it before moving on to the next section. Be careful not to walk on or make any impressions on the screeded sand as you work. Before we move on, a couple of things. If you are laying paving stones next to an existing concrete surface, you should lay the sand so that it is exactly two and one-eighth inches below that concrete surface. A good way to do this is to cut a two and one-eighth inch notch out of your two by four so that when you screed next to the concrete surface, the two by four will screed the sand two and one-eighth inches from the top of the concrete. You can check the sand height as you go by setting a paving stone next to the concrete. It should stand one quarter of an inch above the concrete surface because when it is compacted, the paving stone will drop exactly one quarter inch on the one inch bed of coarse sand you just screeded. For a square or rectangular project, start laying your paving stones in the sand first starting in your square corner and working your way outward into the project area in a triangular direction. Make sure to lay your border stones first. Since our rounded project is freestanding and not up against your house or a sidewalk, we will lay out in a triangular direction from a starting point at one edge of our project. Lay your stones one by one sliding each new paving stone straight down onto the sand against the paving stone you have just laid. Be careful not to slide the paving stones across the sand into place or you will ruin the smooth bed you just created and they will not fit snug to one another. To nudge the paving stones tighter together, gently tap them with the handle of a hammer or with a rubber mallet. Never stomp a paver into place. Continue to lay pavers outward, filling in in a triangular direction from your starting point. If after laying some stones you find that they are not aligning correctly, stop and find out what the problem is before continuing. Once you get all the paving stones in place, you may find that some may need to be cut to form a straight line or curve. To determine where to cut the stone, Set the full stone in place, and then use a grease pencil and straight edge to mark the cutting line on top of the paving stone. Carefully remove the stone once it's marked. You can use a guillotine cutter for simple straight cuts, but for angles and overall better results, we recommend a masonry saw with a diamond tip blade. A masonry saw is easy to use and makes smooth and accurate cuts. No matter which cutter you use, always wear gloves and safety goggles. Once your paving stones are set, it's time to install an edge restraint to keep them in place. The two most common types of edge restraints are aluminum edging and plastic edging for pedestrian traffic. We highly recommend that you use aluminum edging. Aluminum restraints are lightweight, easy to use, flexible, and they do not warp over time. Use landscape nails to nail down the aluminum edging along all the exposed sides of your paving stone project. For driveways, it's recommended to install a concrete toe with three-quarter inch rebar on all exposed sides. After all the paving stones are cut and set in place, use a flat shovel to dig a trench around the edge of your newly laid stones. Dig straight down two to four inches below the bottom of the paving stones and out from the edge of the stones four to five inches. Be careful not to move or in any way disturb the paving stones. Next, shovel a thick mixture of concrete into the trench and smooth halfway up the paving stones at a 45 degree angle as shown. 
that's all there is to it. Your paving stones are set. It's time to finish the job by setting the paving stones firmly into place with the vibrating plate compactor. This is the most critical step to locking your stones in place. Spread a light layer of paved stone paper sand over the surface of your project. Then, just as if you are mowing a lawn, make one pass over the entire project area. Use a rubber mallet and a wood block to set the areas you can't reach with the compactor. Next, sweep paper sand into the gaps between the paving stones and run the compactor over them one last time, sweeping more paper sand into any joints as needed. Be sure to keep extra sand from your project. After a few rainstorms, the sand in the joints will pack down and you may need to refill the gaps. Congratulations! You just completed a valuable landscape improvement to your home. Now you can step back and enjoy your accomplishment with the personal satisfaction of having created a beautiful outdoor environment that is uniquely yours, easy to maintain, and one that you, your family and friends will enjoy for years to come. The satisfaction of a job well done. The pride in knowing you did it yourself. The beauty of a landscape transformed. With Pavestone products, you can transform an ordinary yard into a beautiful landscape uniquely designed by you. Build an attractive patio. Add a decorative retaining wall. Or create a winding garden path that will add value to your home. Step by step, one project at a time, your landscape inspirations become reality with Pavestone's do-it-yourself home beautification systems. A Pavestone wall project will enhance the beauty of any lawn, landscape, or garden. Pavestone wall stones come in a number of colors, shapes, and textures and can be used to build a retaining wall, section off planter beds, create a decorative ring around your favorite tree, add a terrace to your garden, or reclaim space from a sloping section of your yard. Before you begin, you will need to determine how many courses or layers of wall stone you'll need by estimating the approximate size of the wall you want to build. Your local Home Depot will be happy to help you with this. Next, gather the following tools, equipment, and materials. Gloves and safety glasses, shovel, tape measure, mini sledgehammer, four inch chisel, carpenter's level, torpedo level, nylon mason's string, pencil, string level, stakes, hand tamp, wheelbarrow, and a guillotine splitter. You will also need Pavestone paper sand for a base, and for some projects, Pavestone all-purpose stone for backfill. Your local Home Depot will be happy to recommend a paver base or sand suitable for your project, as well as help you determine how much you'll need. There are four basic steps for installing a wall project using Pavestone wall stones preparing the site, preparing the base, laying the stones, and cutting the stones. There are many choices available today in wall colors, textures, and shapes. The stones we will use in this demonstration are paved stones, Anchor Windsor stones. Start by marking the ground area where you want to build your wall with spray paint. Then place tall stakes along the paint line as shown. Next, run a string between the stakes at the height you want your wall to reach. Make sure the string is level by using your string level. Since the wall stones are 4 inches in height, you will need to measure down the stakes at 4 inch increments, marking each increment with a pencil. Keep in mind that for tall walls, walls requiring more than three courses or layers of wall stones, 
you must bury the first course fully. Small walls, walls three courses or less, require that you only partially bury the first course at least two to three inches into the ground. The next step is to excavate the ground and install the base where you will set the first course of wall stones. How deep and thick your base needs to be depends on your wall height. For small walls, which are three courses or less of four inch wall stones, dig out the trench three inches deep. For tall walls that are four to seven courses high of four inch wall stones, the trench must be eight inches deep. Both wall heights require a trench that is 12 inches wide. After digging, tamp down the floor of the trench with either a hand tamp or a compactor. Now you are ready to put in the base. For a small wall, all you need for a sufficient base is one inch of coarse sand. Place sand in the trench and then level the sand by smoothing it out as shown. Tall walls need a rigid base four inches thick. For a rigid base, use paved stone paper base, or prepare a six to one mixture of dry sand and Portland cement. That is, six shovelfuls of sand for every one shovelful of Portland cement. And make sure it is well blended. Be sure to keep this mixture dry, as it will set if it gets wet. Whichever you use, fill the length of the trench to a depth of four inches. Use a 2x4 to smooth out the base material and make sure it is level throughout in both directions. Now, readjust the string height on your stakes by moving them down to the top of your first wall level. You are now ready to start laying the wall stones. If your wall is set on ground that rises or slopes, begin at the lowest point. Now, set the stones in the base side by side leveling each stone in both directions with a torpedo level as you go. Once the base course is placed, set the next course by placing each stone in a staggered pattern, making sure that each stone bridges the two stones below it so that the joints do not line up. As you place a stone on top of a course, pull it forward to secure it in place. When building your wall, you may need to lay partial stones to complete a course. If you need to cut stones to partial lengths, mark the length you need on the stone. Be sure to wear protective eyewear, and then use the mini sledgehammer and four inch chisel to score the length you need on all sides of the stone. If you need stones to be split in half, you'll find several stones on each pallet that have grooves down the center of the back to make splitting easier. Then, on a sidewalk or a hard surface, pound the score line with a mini sledgehammer and chisel until it breaks. You can also use a guillotine splitter. A guillotine splitter is both quick and easy and makes accurate, clean cuts. To finish out your project, backfill the wall with native soil and compact in four inch increments. For small walls, just use the soil you excavated from the trench. For tall walls, use a clean granular backfill like fine gravel or pea gravel at a thickness of about six inches to assist in draining. Fine soils may wash through the joints from time to time. To prevent this, install a weed block or landscape filter fabric by rolling it out along the back of the wall before you backfill. Lay the top of the roll halfway over the last row of stones and set the top layer on the wall. This will hold the fabric in place. We also highly recommend that you glue the top stone or a capstone to the row beneath with concrete adhesive from the paint department to make the wall system more secure. Congratulations! You just completed a valuable landscape improvement to your home. Now you can step back and enjoy your accomplishment with the personal satisfaction of having created a beautiful outdoor environment that is uniquely yours, easy to maintain, and one that you, your family and friends will enjoy for years to come.